to repent. Because the time of ignorance, God is said, has moved now. So it is time for us to repent and to repent immediately, not procrastinating. And then there is a one, a final one in verse 12 that uh, um, those who think they stand, they should take it. Which means we should always check our salvation every day. That's what the Bible tells us. That we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We should not compare us with other specific person. Just look unto Jesus and check yourself and see whether you are still in faith or you are not. Then the verse 13, I always love that passage that there is no temptation taking you with such as is common to man, common denomination as we call it in arithmetic. <laughs> Is a common thing. Nothing that has happened in life to anybody that has never happened before. So you can't say because it's now happening to you is new. And as a result, you, you should now do whatever is not uh, is opposite the uh, divine will of the Lord because you are now being tempted. Everybody will go through temptation. It's only that the temptation differs. So this morning I pray that. The grace to, to, to survive at the time of our own temptation, God will give to us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are looking at First Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 1 to 13. First Corinthians 10, from verse 1 to 13. A long passage, and therefore a lot of uh, lessons we could learn. But of course, because of limited time, we will look at uh, one, the rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. There was a rock that they drank from, the children of Israel drank from on their way to the promised land. In Exodus 17, from verse 1 to 7, Exodus 17, from verse 1 to 7, when they were thirsty, and God told Moses to take a look at a particular rock and go and strike it with his rod that it would bring forth water to drink. He did, and they gave got plenty of water to drink. By the time they now go to Numbers chapter 20, from verse 1 to 12, Numbers 20 from verse 1 to 12, they were thirsty again. And again, God pointed out a rock to Moses and told him this time to speak to the rock. But instead of speaking to the rock, he smote the rock and he even did it twice. And again, water came out for them to drink. And you know the rest of the story. God was angry with Moses for smiting the rock again. Now there's a lot of blessing we could learn from that bit alone. Uh, one of which I think we learned not too long ago that you must listen to God carefully so that you know when he asks you to strike and when he asks you to speak. Mm. But why was God so angry with Moses who had been leading this people for 40 years for making what we call just one mistake it is what we just discovered now, that that rock is Christ. And Christ is to be smitten once. It's to be nailed to the cross only once. Not twice, not three times. After Calvary, you speak to Jesus. You don't crucify him again. You can go deeper into that and 
discuss the issue of backsliding. The Bible says that if after you have already known the way of salvation, you now go back into the world, you are crucifying Jesus Christ a second time. It's a very dangerous thing to backslide. But we can also look at the fact that this rock kept following them. They were not aware that that rock was falling. Anytime they tested, there was this rock there waiting. It could be encouraging to us because Hebrews 13 verse 5, Hebrews 13 verse 5 tells us that Jesus Christ will never leave us and will never forsake us. He will follow us wherever we go. Which is another way of saying that where you are going, Jesus is already waiting there for you. Uh, before they got to where they became thirsty, the rock was there. The rock didn't just appear all of a sudden when they arrived. Remember Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, Revelation 1 verse 8, where Jesus Christ says, I am the Alpha as well as the Omega. So as you are journeying on in the Christian race, remember that where you are going, Christ is already waiting for you there. That's one aspect that we will look at. We can spend more time on that, but we want to also look at the section where he tells us specifically certain things we must not do. Because we, we, are to, we are to learn from the examples of these people who have gone before us. Number one, he said, don't lose. First John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17 which is incidentally in the New Testament, not in the Old, says in 1 John chapter 2, 15 to 17, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For whatever is in the world is not of the Father, but of the world. And so you are to beware of the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and the pride of life. Watch what you watch. In other words, be careful what to focus your eyes on, what to feed your eyes on. Be careful of the loss of the flesh. Be careful what attracts you. Things that will be pleasing to the flesh are not necessarily pleasing to God. Be careful of the pride of life. Don't be proud. Then he says you are to hate idolatry. Don't be idolaters. Anything you love more than God or anything you love as equal to your love for God is an idol. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 says you are to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. If all have been devoted to loving God, then there's nothing left to be devoted to something else. Then it says you must not fornicate. Don't commit adultery. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 15 to 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 15 to 20. Make it clear. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do what you like with your body. It belongs to the Holy Spirit. That's a very important aspect of the Christian doctrine. If anybody tells you, therefore, that once you are born again, you can go on fornicating, 
or committing adultery, that fellow is preparing you for hell. Although that aspect also has one pleasant point. The pleasant point is found in Matthew 15, verse 13. Matthew 15, verse 13. Where the Lord says, Every plant my Father has not planted shall be rooted off. So in prayer, you can always go to Him and command every sickness, every disease in your body to be rooted off. Because they are not planted in your body, in that temple of the Holy Spirit. By God. Then he said, We must not tempt God. Well, you all know the story of the temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4, from verse 1 to 11. Matthew 4, from verse 1 to 11, where the devil asked the Lord Jesus Christ to demonstrate his power for showmanship. And Jesus Christ said, No. Oh, we are not to tempt the Lord. Be careful what you do that will amount to tempting God. There was uh, one prophet who said that because Daniel went to the den of lions and came out alive, he jumped into the zoo, in, in, in the enclosure for lions with his uh, prayer rod or prayer staff. And initially, when the lion saw him coming in, they probably mistook him for one of the, their keepers. Mm -hmm. And so when they saw him, they moved back mm -hmm. because they had been trained to move for their keeper so that they can be fed. But then he began to say, you see now, Look at them, they are even afraid of me. Mm. And he began to approach. Mm. Well, the rest of the story was that the lions fed, him, fed on him, they killed him. And uh, unfortunately, they had to kill the first lion that tasted his blood because otherwise the lion would not want to eat ordinary meat again. Don't tempt God. And then he said, don't more more. There's only one way you can fulfill that promise. Because sooner or later there will be something in life that you may want to complain about. Mm -hmm. Just remember what David said in Psalm 34 verse 1. Psalm 34 verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Praise God all the time because he knows what he's doing. All things work together for good to them that love God. Yeah. You may not understand now, but you will understand by and by. Very quickly, let me add just one more point. That is the section where they say, He that thinks he stands should take heed, lest he falls. Learn from the example of Peter. When the Lord said in Matthew 26, from verse 31 to 35, Matthew 26, 31 to 35, that all the disciples would be offended in him that night, Peter was sure of himself that it is impossible for him to deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. When the Lord told him, you will deny me three times this night, you in particular, before the call flowed twice, mm -hmm. he said, if I have to die with you, I will. By the time we go to Matthew 26, from verse 69 to 75, Matthew 26, 69 to 75, not only did he deny Jesus, he denied him even with a curse. At the end, the Bible said, he wept bitterly. I'm sure if anybody asks any of us, or at least many of us today, can you ever deny Jesus? Can you say you don't know him? 
Uh, everybody will say that this can never happen. But the Bible says, take heed. I pray that the temptation that will come, the situation that will come against us, that will cause us to deny Jesus Christ, will never come our way. Amen. 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 Some girls were kidnapped by Boko Haram some years ago here in Nigeria. And then they sent somebody to go and negotiate their release. And the Boko Haram people said, yes, we will let them go, provided so much money is paid, and provided they all become Muslims. Of about, I don't know the number now, but 300 or something of them, only one girl refused to become a master. And we never had a fight again. All the others said, when we get back home, we will go and reconvert. The situation that will cause you to say, I don't know Jesus anymore. Mm -hmm. I pray it will never happen to you in Jesus' name. Amen. If it is a color, he opened the head so a color for a color. And then, he can never leave with me. And then, a part of the world will tell you. And that's how my self in Los Angeles. I say, a part of the Jesus. I call him for what we pray. Jesus to so we pray for him for a while. For him for a while. If we keep it over time, love can't turn to a blank crow, they pray and be happy. But what you don't, what you drew the war. The coffee, the child, 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 iru if I could fail you, if I could fail a rare, a gradual chebe, who won't hear, no longer have got a sheep. When they come up for it, sir. Uncle Jay and Batty Fern, a mass of control by Fern, you alone, but pay you all the same. On to Bafera, to Bosch Fern alone, all the same. So you can tell me very soon if you can't go off, go go idea, go go at Barawa. Yes, I will be possible on the journey. On the comfort of a member, I have to put to Corrid, I was afraid to borrow a phone, you look for a comma, but she woke. 